How do you properly sear a piece of fish like this? Why would you sear a piece of fish? These are a lot of questions that I get about fish. I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of them today. Beautiful piece of fish. First up, check it out. If you have a good butcher, they know what's up. Paper on your proteins is gonna make sure that protein stays fresher longer. Plastic on proteins, no bueno. Paper on proteins, on the other hand, bueno. As far as portioning goes, I prefer to use this portion for my searing. We don't really cut our steaks like this. We typically will go around this bony area, trim this off, and we can use this for fish and chips. This is a halibut, by the way. Um, halibut's in season right now where I'm at, so I'm using halibut. Um, any fish with a skin is something I wanna show you how to sear today. You do not need a fish with skin, though, to utilize this technique I'm about to show you. Generally, you could just ask your butcher to portion it for you into searable pieces like this right here. Same thing goes for your salmon or any other fish. You might as well ask them so it removes that extra work for you. Okay, now what if you're not cooking the fish day of when you buy it? Do you freeze it? I don't know. Are you going to cook it tomorrow or are you going to cook it a week from now? If I, a week from now, I'd say freeze it. If not, this is how I'm gonna store it. Keeping your fish on ice in the fridge on a paper towel or a towel is gonna ensure that it stays fresher longer. Fish needs to be held at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about zero degrees Celsius for those not in the US with the crazy metric system. But either way, this is a habit that I picked up from work, keeping all of the seafood on ice, whether it was uh, mussels, clams, fish, any sort of seafood, always kept on ice just because of that temperature regulation. Refrigerators and walk-ins usually remain at around, I don't know, 38, 40 ish degrees Fahrenheit. And then if you open it a lot, it could go up to 50 sometimes. So you just want to put it on there, keep it fresher longer. Paper towel is also insurance that the insurance, it also ensures that it stays dry as well. Which brings me to, which brings me to this. Yes, I'm busting out the control freak today just so I have a better view for you guys. Which brings me to this. Paper towels and towels. This is another reason why a seared fish is so much better at a restaurant. You will see people have this on the kitchen line and they'll take a fish, drop it onto the towel, usually a linen, put it over the fish and then pat it down dry right before searing it. And that is what will ensure you the crispiest skin, I'm telling you right now. So paper towel, best friend when searing a fish. What is the proper pan for searing a fish? If you're gonna ask me, it's gonna be pretty much what I say for every protein. It's gonna be a nice carbon steel pan because I really want high heat. Or it's always gonna be a stainless steel pan. Now, stainless steel pan is gonna get me a much more controlled, even heat. But be in mind, it's gonna take longer to heat up and we do need a really fucking hot pan to see our fish. I'm saying like probably 400 degree pan to sear your fish. And yes, it is in an oven which is at around 400 degrees as well, keeping hot. So it's ready to go once I pull it out. And I also do need the oven on for searing the fish. Now, everything you see here is the supplies. I have it all laid out for you, sort of like I would in a station. And yes, this is also giving me anxiety. I just wanted to show you my really cool oil bottle. Um, lemons for the end. This is butter. This is not just a Pikachu, it's butter. Drying station, salt, oiling station, pan. This is it. And then this paper right here, this is gonna be for something interesting. I think it might be kind of gimmicky, but I'm gonna show you, you can actually get a really crispy fish with paper. Yes, that's a thing and I just learned this. Now let me just show you how it would work in a proper setting. And no, you don't need to use gloves. Um, so here's how it would go down. You'd pull it out from the drawer and you'd have your beautiful fish. It's already dried out for you. As you can see, since it's been on a paper towel, it's already become even more dry and ready to be seared to have a beautiful skin. Now, this would then go on to a paper towel and then we would pat it down dry just a little more. Now, we're ready. From this point, I would go on to my little tray. I would put a good amount 
of any of my oil that I'd like that has a smoke point of above 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Salt it all around. You can do pepper, that's optional. And there we go, our fish is ready to go. Voila, that's it, that's the setup. That's all you need, and that's gonna give you a proper fucking seared fish every time. I wanna make a quick note though. If you're gonna do this, you're gonna immediately have to cook this. Do not let this sit, sit in the fridge for like 10 minutes or so, just let it go, because then you're gonna start drawing out the moisture and it's gonna become a different situation. So season it cook it. Another question that I want to answer is why does food stick to a stainless steel pan when you use it? Well, stainless steel pans are actually very non-stick. We just need to make sure our heat is high enough. Mine is at about 400 degrees right now, I can see. And we also need to use enough of our oil. I'm sorry for that screeching sound. That's just the sound the machine makes with a really nice pan sometimes. Anyways, you use a really nice neutral oil. And you gotta make sure that oil is heated up enough before you put your protein on. And as you can see, I'm being kind of generous with the oil when it comes to fish. I wanna make sure that I have one nice layer of oil. As you can see, my oil is starting to smoke. I'm good to go. And then I'm laying it down away from me. I'm pushing the fish down. I wanna hold it down and I can feel little air bubbles escaping. It should feel like a vibrating fish on my hand. When that vibrating begins to slow down a little bit, that's when I know I can shove it into the oven. So just keep holding this. This part is actually very crucial. This is what's gonna make sure we're gonna get that nice skin. Now, they do have an invention for this. That invention is called a chef press. They use this in a lot of Michelin star restaurants. You just drop it on your fish and then you can toss it into the oven with that on. But if you don't have this, just hold it down with your hand until all those air bubbles escape. And now here is the crucial part. At this point, we're gonna toss this into our 400 degree oven and we're gonna let it ride. And now this is another reason why I think it's better at restaurants. You get a nice sear on the skin and then toss it into an oven to let it fully cook. About 140, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. I, honestly, I don't ever check the temperature. I just kind of, I feel it, I know. But I'd say check the temperature just to get acquainted with the fish. Um, but yeah, we're gonna let it go in the oven. I'd say for about two to three minutes. Let her rest in the oven. So just uh, chill out for a bit. I pulled my fish out. This is what it looks like. Here's a close up just so you can see what I'm looking for. And at this point, I wanna add in butter, but before I add in butter, I need to remove the oil. So take a little fish spat, and then you just remove the excess onto a sheet tray or whatever. We used to throw it into a trash can. And now just so I can show you just how non-stick stainless steel pin pans are when you use them right, is look, I'm taking my spoon and I'm flipping the fish over. Boom, I, I barely had to do anything. Flip the fish over. So flip the fish, and there we go. That is a crispy looking skin. And if I wanna add some more flavor, I'm gonna to toss in my butter. And you might be asking, if I wanna put butter in, why don't I just start with butter? Well, the butter's gonna burn when I cook the fish. So I'm using a high smoke point oil instead of starting with butter. And then at this point, I could just give my fish a little basty baste with my brown butter. And the whole purpose for this is to give it more flavor. I'm not really doing much more to it. I mean, I am also crisping the skin a touch because it is a hot fat, but I'm basically adding more flavor. Beautiful piece of fish. Now I wanna show you that paper method. So basically we take a paper and we take a fish and it's supposed to work. So paper is going down, there's no oil on this pan. It is hot and it's going on the paper. This feels really weird, by the way. Now, right now, I'm doing the same way. I'm just doing it on paper. I did put a touch of oil on the fish and I seasoned it all around. It's on a 400 degree pan, straight from the oven. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna toss it into the oven as well. And the paper is supposed to, the paper's supposed to make it nonstick, uh, or at least that's what my buddy Grant says and also Kenji Lopez says is the paper makes it non-stick. I think that's kind of gimmicky. Just use oil. Cause for me, if I'm going to do this at work, 
I don't work in a restaurant anymore, but if I were, I uh, would not want to be wasting all this paper. That's why, like for example, we would use linens with the fish every time. Imagine having to take a paper towel out every time to uh, pat your fish dry, no way. Um, this is gonna be kind of gimmicky, but if it's at home, sure, try it out. I'm gonna see if it produces a better result, to be honest. Now, while that's going, I just wanna show you the cooked fish versus the raw fish. And actually, let me flip this around so you could see the skin difference. There we go. The cooked fish versus the raw fish. I'm just doing this for thumbnail's sake, to be honest. So if you saw this thumbnail and you liked it, let me know because I, I think it looks like a good thumbnail. If you do decide to baste, I do recommend a good basting spoon that has a nice deep bowl. This one, on the other hand, has a slant to it. That's because, that's because it will hug the edge of the pan, as you can see. This slanty spoon, it hugs the edge of the pan. So it just makes it just that much better of a spoon. I love this spoon. I think it's called Bridgecraft. There you go. Solid spoon. So I think it works, unfortunately. I so if you too would like to, uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no to the paper. Uh, skin just came off. I'm left with a mess. Please comment down below if you've tried this weird method. Um, I'm not a fan. I'm just gonna stick with the usual. And you know, a little squeeze of lemon doesn't hurt, although it will make your skin less crispy. Just keep that in mind. This is my go-to method. Shout out to Max the Meat Guy that told me to baste facing the camera. This is not natural for me, but Max the Meat Guy, he knows how to make things look pretty. Anyways. That is how I properly sear fish. Does this look any good? 